herb. Herb is a plant. I mean, herbs are good for everything. Welcome to Gene Cannabis TV. You're up to episode 612. We've been at this for a day or two, and I've got a special guest. We've got David Raymond with us. And uh, you got, oh, well, I forgot to introduce myself, I guess. I'm Dank. <laughs> uh, but David Raymond, thanks for coming in. Uh, David is an older hand at the Community TV Studios and uh, years ago. And uh, so it's kind of a homecoming, also, so to speak, I guess, yeah, coming back in. Yeah. Yeah, little things a little different, though, huh? A lot, a lot different. We used to have a, no computers, no, just old cameras and old tape and yeah. you know, stuff like that. And I was, when I, one time I became president, like back in the late 90s, whatever it was, and pretty much had to, got them their first email, or their IMAX, so they could actually start doing video editing with, with iMovie. <laughs> wow. Yeah. A long time ago, man. Oh, so man. I guess so, yeah. Wow, that's uh, incredible. Well, I'm, uh, uh, I keep thinking when I started the Eugene Cannabis TV, started working with the Eugene Cannabis TV, but uh, we were just talking about that earlier, and I don't remember what episode it was, but I have most of the old episodes, and I was just the other day coming across 80, number 82, so uh, I haven't a chance had it to watch it yet. But I, uh, I have the original version that I did with Daniel Ernst, and mm -hmm. that's what I want to talk a little bit about later is, you bet. is Danbo. You, you bet. We want to talk about Danbo. Our friend Danbo is in a federal prison 15 years, and in the federal prison, you don't get good time, early out for good time. You serve the whole thing. It's, a, man know? it's a mandatory sentence, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, was, yeah, we need to t definitely be talking a lot about Danbo. Uh, <clears throat> I want to throw in some calendar things real quick. Uh, May 21st, the uh, the Turpin the Turpin Cup is uh, going to be in Williams, Oregon. That'd be a fun event to go to. It didn't have a website, but uh, it's the Oregon Sun Growers, and it's in Williams, Oregon, and it's right beside the Williams Grange. So where's Williams? Uh, it's down by Grants Pass. Okay. Uh, <coughs> funny story about that area. We went to the uh, uh, barter fair uh, in uh, uh, in um, uh, Rouge. In Rouge, that was it. Rouge. My friend Ron, he was the first guy in the computers, you know, and so uh, he got me going in computers. And uh, anyway, he brought in the map that he got off the internet showing how to get to Roosh. And so he was driving, you know, so he comes to the house and brings it in with him, shows me. Well, we had left, forgotten left on the coffee table, you know, so we go <laughs> off going to Rouge. We got down to Rouge and got so lost. We stopped and asked directions three different times, and all three of them were wrong. We had a, but anyway, it was a, I've had that happen a oh, few times in my life. <laughs> geez, that was a mess. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so Williams, a, a terpene uh, cup. I'd be, look, check into it if you're interested. And then uh, we've got the Cannabis Science Pub, and I, I, you know, I really messed up because I needed to check my info. I was thinking it was the last Tuesday of the month. My note says it's the second Tuesday of the month. And I know, it used to always so, be the last Tuesday. Yeah, that's all I'm thinking. I, I, so I don't know where the yeah, second came in. Pretty but, much videotaped uh, every one of them except for the last two because I was sick this winter. Uh, I forgot about that. Yes, of course. David has yes, been taping them. So uh, for those of you who haven't been able to make it to those present presentations, it's available. And I recommend it highly. They are so educational. They start out with a quiz, asking questions, and people from the audience uh, and uh, the people in the audience that gets the, the question correctly wins a prize. And so uh, and it's, they get interesting conversation going just from that process. And then they have a panel and they talk about uh, different stuff. They, yeah. And, and, and they're all about the same, but the same, it's on the same general subject as the whole evening. And oh, right. it's just fantastic. Free. It's just. Yeah, I have, a, I have a website I've kind of dedicated to that. It's called videooregon.org. There you go. And check that I out. I need to clean up the website. It's got videos on there. It's got the 2014 <laughs> list and the 2015. So too, there's too much information on there for most people to want to go to. And don't go there with an iPhone or an iPad because it's, I got to straighten it out. So. <laughs> <laughs> but what a source. There's some great information stuff, on there. It really yeah, is. Yeah, so. that's incredible. Uh, and then, uh, see, May 26th. Oh, this one here. Uh, <laughs> May 26th in Portland. And this is, is the... Uh, uh, oh, the, uh, shoot, I can't put my hand on the name. Uh, uh, 
It's a business organization, cannabis business organization. I don't have that down here, but uh, OLCC licensee is underway. Please join us in Portland on May 26th for an informative meeting with Ivo Trummer, Legislative Director for Governor Kate Brown, along with OLCC's Nathan Ricks and Jamie Dickinson. This is the Oregon. This is the Oregon Cannabis Business association you know and i mean I, I i you know it's all well and good they're doing that but i'm wondering is what about the, who's speaking for you and i of these people that's what i want probably to know. nobody <laughs> that's what i'm the, concerned my, about. Bi my biggest problem with most of this stuff is the legislature right now as far as i'm concerned is doing an excellent job they went in with the industrial hemp the medical marijuana thing the industrial hemp thing that they actually legalized the growing of industrial hemp but it took six years for the department of agriculture to have the first meeting oh, yeah oh, you know yeah. that yeah. <laughs> there's more to be told on the story but <laughs> uh june 11th and 12th is the oregon hemp convention in portland uh admission is to fifteen dollars for one day or two for twenty that's the oregon hemp convention.com website so Check that out. Uh, they, that's uh, what, the second or third year, I think, now. So, a uh, great event. And then uh, June 18th is the Umqua Hemp Fest in Roseburg. And that's at umquahempfest.com. That's a one day, interesting, that's a one day event. It's on a Saturday, but yet they have camping. <laughs> so, I guess you go in Friday and camp and go to the event and then camp over and leave Sunday, I guess. But, but don't smoke no pot at night, uh, huh? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, in private, it's in private land, though. Uh, oh, okay. It's a twenty dollar entry fee, and, and and camping is is uh, free. So, anyway, uh, no, no, I take it back. After hours camping and night event is twenty dollars. Just an extra twenty dollars to do that. Okay. okay. Uh, it's just yeah. Uh, but here's another one that really got me too. <clears throat> June seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth, the Alaska Hemp Fest, the first one. Uh, it, and it's in uh, Keeney, Keeney Lake. And so you might ask yourself, where is downtown Keeney Lake? Alaska. It's seven and a half miles, Edger, Edger, uh, Edgerton Highway, Alaska number 10. The turnoff to the Edgerton Highway is at 82 mile, Richardson Highway, AK 24. And here's the map, I can't show you people, but <laughs> here's the map, and this is where the hemp fest is. <laughs> I mean, it's out in the Tuleys, and the website talks about parking, and it says park along the highway, and I thought, <laughs> park along the highway? Can you imagine how, many, how long you have to walk to get into that thing? I mean, just, oh, that's, wow, that's crazy. But anyway, that's cool, Alaska, Alaska hemp fest. So anyway, uh, okay, so Danbo. <clears throat> uh, Danbo actually, uh, I was running the camera at Gene Cannabis TV, and Danbo was on, and he's the one that uh, suggested I go on camera. He said, you got a lot to say. And I said, well, I would, I'd like to, but uh, <clears throat> I need to keep my anonymity because my wife is a daycare provider, and she's concerned that my activism would get, come back on her, so uh, he said, well, wear a bag over here. And I said, yeah, right. Well, and you're the one that wore the bag yeah. years ago? Yeah, okay. so we laughed about it, you know, and then later I got to thinking about it more. I thought, oh, I'd better like it. I thought I could wear a bag over my head. I could go ahead and do that. I could go on the show. Plus, the beauty of it is it could use the fact that hey, this is the land of the free, and I got to wear a bag over my head to talk about a plant? <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> one, one of my favorite, favorite internet pictures is a couple of aliens talking to some police officer of some kind or another. He's, he's looking at him, he's going, and you say your whole world is that war with a plant? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. So, anyway, yeah, Danbo, uh, uh, I could uh, go for hours on Danbo. Uh, I was at, uh, uh, I was there at 4:20 when they arrested him and uh, took him down and hurt his knee, and I was there. Uh, and uh, I've been to two, let's see, I think two of his federal trials, uh, which was an experience. Every trial I've ever, and a couple of state trials, every trial I've been to a Danbo. It was an incredible experience for one or the other, but right. I mean, but uh, Danbo, and I said it, and I've said it all, and I still, I'm, almost, I'm 71 years old, I'll tell you what, he's the biggest man I've met in my life. Yep, I agree, he's like, <laughs> why he's in jail, I don't know, he's one of the biggest sweethearts, I met him yep. back in the, probably 94, 95, he got, had a computer, and I went and worked on his computer, and got him on the internet, and, and he was doing all this stuff, and he's, he's probably done more for the legalization of marijuana in the state of Oregon than most 10 people that you could come up with. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and he, he just, it's, it's, it's sad that he, that he got caught and even, I have a letter from him, he sent me a two page letter here um, and a whole bunch of little tiny things that I had to scan each thing so I could actually read them because they're so small. 
Um, I'm not going to get into reading it, but what he's got here is a, a petition that's, that's gone to um, Loretta Lynch, Attorney General, United States Department of Justice. Dear Madam Attorney General, it closes a petition for rulemaking regarding two separate issues. The first issue is a petition to remove by administrative means cannabis sativa L and cannabis indica L from Schedule 1 to title in Title 21, 811, and 812. The second issue is more complicated but related to the first. I'm going to have all, I just scanned all these and they're just all in, in text format, but I'm going to make a PDF and put them on, on my, the, 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 the Emerald Empire Hemp Fest, or the, uh, the, new, the new website. Great, and, and speaking of which, <laughs> we want to make that announcement and I have to, I almost forgot about that. Yes, we, <laughs> we do have a new website. Uh, our old website, our webmaster uh, took it hostage and uh, so we've started a new website and uh, and it's uh, coming together and so it'll be getting better all the time it's ee -E hempfest so it's shorter quicker and easier to remember eehempfest.com -E .com. yes thank you and uh, <clears throat> so uh, you can get your volunteer application there as well as your vendor application uh, we're taking volunteer applications vendor applications go ahead and download it and then check it out and read it and go ahead and fill it out but don't send it until you contact us because we're not taking vendors yet because I don't want to take in any money until we have the venue. Right. Uh, so once we get the venue, it's, we're going wide open and it's going. It's less than, less than two months now. Right. Well, I bought, <laughs> I bought the, the website name last Monday, or last Sunday, I think it was, I okay. called you and told you that. And then, we, yeah. then I had previously downloaded pretty much all the, the logos and vendor sponsor information. So we, I have copies of all that. And then I've just been blindfolded putting it back together somehow, and so right. it's, we're, it. we're working and on it. And our ex uh, webmaster, the one before the, the uh, see, what yeah, Clay. Him? Yeah. yeah, Clay. No, I mean, uh, our former webmaster before him uh, was a good friend of ours, and uh, he's been in contact, and so now he's talking with David, and so uh, it also helped to reconstruct our, our website. So again, that's E.E. -E Hempfest which stands for Coach Emerald Empire, so ee e. Hempfest at hotmail.com. And uh, so anyway, yeah, uh, uh, <clears throat> yes, it definitely go online and uh, once uh, David gets it up there, uh, read what Danvo is doing. Uh, he is, like I said, the bravest man. The thing about uh, the uh, Compassion Center, you know, it's oh, yeah, Compassion yep. Center. I said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He said, I've, I've, I know uh, the person that started that. And I, oh, you mean Dan, you mean uh, Todd Delato? I, no, <laughs> no, actually what evolved into the Compassion Center was actually uh, Danbo and Sharon doing an right. exchange on Wednesday nights on High Street, I think if I remember correctly, or just off of High Street, but yeah, anyway, it was, yeah. uh, it was an incredible thing, nobody making any money, people come down and just exchange patients in need, pick drawers and exchanging, so... Anyway, it was a neat deal, and that's what evolved into what is Compassion right. Center. So, well, Dan uh, don't get started. We got it. Uh, we've got. To, uh, we're going to be in the second half here pretty quick. We're just writing it down. Okay. The first well, I'm half. just going to say something here real okay. quick. Okay. Yeah. Daniel and a guy named James Bolt of, uh, are both in the Federal Medical Center in Lexington, Kentucky, and they have a joint petition that's gone to, like I said, it went to the Loretta Lynch Attorney General. It went to. Two or three other people up there. Like, I think there's one that went to the FDA or DEA or something like that. But all this stuff will be online, so people can go and mm -hmm. read it. Just as just Very as cool. I got it from him, cool. um, a lot of information there, and, and it's like he's not he's not done. Okay, that's one thing I like about Daniel Ernst. Yep. He's not done. You he's bet. in jail we'll for right 15 back. years. Right Are you tired of following all the rules? Ready to let loose? Have a little fun? Sounds like you need to. Get high. And with Narcomex Incorporated, your direct-to-consumer drug trafficking solution, you can. Narcomex values your business. That's why we're your number one supplier of drugs, and you're our number one consumer. These billions can't be wrong. We work hard for your business and have killed not one, not two, but three Mexican police and two journalists just to keep you high with that very joint. 
why our commitment to keeping you supplied has killed over 17,000 people right next door. Traffickers, soldiers, journalists, prosecutors, you name it. We're that passionate about your business. We've even begun to destroy some of your favorite tropical beach destinations. Because if you smoke enough at home, you don't even need a beach. But don't legalize it or grow it at home. Let us do the work for you. Sure, consumers boycotted evil companies, but there's no need to boycott Narcomex Incorporated, your direct-to-consumer drug trafficking solution, also offering heroin, meth, and cocaine. Narcomex Incorporated. Live a little and forget others won't. Welcome back to part two of episode 612, and we were talking about our friend Danbo, uh, and uh, being in prison, you know, he didn't have access to a typewriter, so uh, here it is, uh, here it is in longhand, so, uh, but I wanted to read this, uh, he said that, he said, uh, he wanted to know if the feds ever showed up at, uh, showed up at your place, is what he asked, and he says, come to find out they put a tracker on my ear, I'm not sure what he means by that, but. The car. Car on, on my car. Yep. Oh, on track my car. on my car. Oh, right. okay, that makes more sense. Uh, I ended up getting sentenced to 15 years, a mandatory minimum enhanced penalty under the Armed Career Criminal Act, uh, originally brought to the people by Ron Wyden. <laughs> uh, my three previous state pot pot convictions was used to label a, label me a career criminal. Now that pot is legal in Oregon, I guess I was just ahead of my time and paying a dear price for it now. The Fed certainly tore up other friends' places looking for me. Well, they didn't actually tear up the place, but they just bugged them. Uh, and I, when I left his last trial, a federal marshal followed me out of the courtroom and, and wanted to talk to me and tried to find out who my name was. I wouldn't tell him. And he threatened to follow me. And I said, go ahead and follow me. What do you do? And uh, so finally he turned around and gave me a name. He said, turned real sweet, real nice, you know. I said, well, here, said, here's my card. He says, if he, Dan Bull calls you, you could give, just give me a call. You know, he wouldn't know you called. And <laughs> so anyway, I took his card because I want to know what his name was. <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, so. Um, this, is, this is just the second page yeah, here. Yeah, and then he's talking about the second page. And the second page here, he's talking about the petition that he, he's talking about, it, which is what we're going to have. Uh, or David Copies of it will be up online that he sent. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, and, and uh, Dan Bo is a constitutionalist. Right. And that was one of the, my one of my uh, favorite stories of my activist years. One of his cases, uh, they uh, got a uh, discovery, and they got some uh, some of the cops' notes. Right. They were referring to him as a constitutionalist. <laughs> really? And I thought, oh, how, <laughs> oh my gosh, one of those. <laughs> Speaking about constitutions, one of the things that here in the state of Oregon that a lot of people don't know is Article 1 of Oregon's Bill of Rights basically states, in, down the road a little bit, but put it short, says that people have the right to form a social compact to alter or change the rule of law. Now, I think that has to do with the initiative process, but people need to understand, we have a couple of organizations out here that, that are dealing bureaucratic organizations like the OLCC and the Oregon Department of Agriculture. Well, they, neither one of those organizations, neither one of them know anything about marijuana in the least little bit. It took the Department of Agriculture six years before they had the first meeting on legalization of industrial hemp, which is signed by Kulingowski in 2009. So I've been to meetings, I've videotaped these meetings and stuff, and it's really sad to me that we have this group of people and it, you see in the papers, to, even today, where they're talking about uh, different cities or counties or, or uh, outside the little cities or communities outside of the cities, um, where they're against, if you were more than 55% of the people were against the marijuana, that still they don't have to, to do something. It's, it's in today's paper, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was, mm. didn't get a chance to cut it out and bring it with me, but... Um, He's in Kentucky, okay, with a federal medical facility is. It says here, here in Kentucky, the hemp agricultural economy seems to be taking off. Last year, the second year, they expanded their acreage by quite a bit, and I recently heard they have 35 processors to make sure the hemp venture is worth it for the farmers. So I ended up here to get a hip replacement surgery, and that went really well. It was done by one of the top surgeons in the U.S. Now, I don't know when, but they're going to ship me somewhere else, but not but not to the camp in Oregon, <laughs> unfortunately. 
um, because the, the BOP rates say my crime has, has great severity, such crazy shit. Excuse my language, but I think we're on community TV, so I think I can say that. I hope this finds you and Marty will take care of herself, your friend Dan. Now, I miss Dan a whole bunch. He's one of the sweethearts of the world, really. He, he fought so hard for everybody and, and a lot for himself, but you know what? He, he did most of his, his own uh, attorney work, and, and I spent a lot of time sending files back and forth and helping him find this and that. And, and so when I, I got this letter a couple weeks ago, and it took me about a few days just to get this scanned off but so I said okay one more proverbial word turd to stir <laughs> for mm. David Raymond so right. yeah, and yeah. I'm going to do everything I can do I don't I can't change what's been go what's already gone down but we got to make people know about it that this guy here that this thing here needs to be wiped off as a crime to go to jail for <coughs> like right this. and we get <coughs> They had him so many charges, he was looking at 30 years, and so they offered him this deal to take, which was 15 years, but it's not pot-related. And that's what kind of ticked me off a little bit on Facebook. This lady activist was saying, yeah, Danbo was pick up 15 years for pot. Well, no, he didn't. Nope. <laughs> he didn't. did not get 15 years for pot. And, I mean, the charges started because of pot, yes, but uh, but he's not in federal prison on pot charges. He's a, he's, he's, he said in the letter, he's a career criminal, according to them, and an armed criminal, criminal or what do they call it, armed something, but it was a... Uh, career criminal, is what yeah, they call it, yeah. Yeah, and, and armed, yeah, an armed career criminal act, that was the, the, the apparently the law that got him where he was at. And like you, were, like you were saying, he's the kindest, gentlest person in your range. The last person that should be in prison, I can even imagine. <laughs> it's quite a total waste of money, uh, and plus well, his rights. But. Well, I heard yet just last day or two that Kate Brown, the governor, was going to start eradicating some of these little things. Well, it won't make a bit, di bit of difference for Danville, but I would like to see that all of his state pot crimes were pardoned. Mm -hmm. So the oh, yeah. so the government mm -hmm. could look back at this and not and see that they actually got somebody for nothing, mm -hmm. you know, or next to nothing. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's you know, I, I hate saying nothing, but because he's in jail for a lot of years. But anyway, so I'm I decided I'm going to bring this to people and <laughs> and let you know that this guy put up the first cannabis TV show, Eugene Cannabis TV show. I helped. I was the president of Access Video. It was called back then before it was Lane County Community TV and. So we, we did the first one, I think, up in the, the Growers Market, the first show or something oh, like that. Oh, that's so. a great place. What a great meeting hall, by the way. I love that. I call it Left Wing Courthouse. Yeah, yeah, right, really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, but anyway, so other than that, that's the, the Daniel thing. And then the rest of the stuff is we just need the people in Oregon. Everybody here is being very passive about this thing. Um, the industrial hemp thing, everybody said, well, President Obama's going to take care of that. It's going to be all legal. We don't have to worry about it. Well, people, passive doesn't get it. If you want to use a term, which I really don't like the definition of passive aggressive, but the, the, the Oregon bureaucracies are passive aggressive. It, passive aggressive basically means a smile with a knife behind your back. <laughs> so we need to do the same thing back. We need to start being aware that whatever they're saying to us, they're, they're, they're looking for more power. They, they don't want to just let us have, I talked to Floyd Przanski a couple of years ago and I said the money needs to go for education, uh, health care, and then he added the word in, well we need to have some for public safety. And I questioned the public safety but also I also understand with all the marijuana growing and all the people that want want to steal from people, yeah, a little bit of public safety money too. So we need to kind of <laughs> get people to focus on <laughs> the education, uh, health care. That's where money needs to go to. We can pay for all of our education and health care needs just from <clears throat> the money comes from tax revenues oh, yeah. from marijuana oh, yeah. or cannabis. Yeah, <clears throat> giving money to law enforcement kind of irks me too because especially, and I don't remember about four or five years ago when we were in the legislature, the Oregon State Police had a PowerPoint presentation about the dangers of, of marijuana and, and how much, how bad it was. And one of the pictures that they showed, and they talked about the abuse, and they showed this big, big plant that was towering over these two narcs. And they were showing, that was an example of the abuse of the program. 
Oh, <laughs> and, it, and it turned out it was a legal plant. It was a legal grow. One, one, one last thing here real quick before we mm, get off. Yeah. Cal, the state of California, the state of California Highway Patrol and UCLA, about seven years ago, I had this video or this, this document that they got a bunch of people drunk and did a driving test. Almost everybody failed the test. Then they got, got everybody high and did the same driving test on a driving course and almost everybody passed the test. And then two weeks, there were two weeks between points. Then two weeks later, they got everybody above the legal limit and then got them high and almost everybody passed the test. But then they, they took it down and it's almost impossible to find <laughs> because they said it was, failed it was failed information or whatever, right? Yeah, 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 you know, right. and I'm going, yeah, because it didn't come out with the, the, what they wanted, right? And so that's what we have to watch out for, people, about being <laughs> passive, just accepting what they say is, you know, the crime or the abuses. Most yeah, of these people don't know anything about it. Gonna, what, Nixon, with the, with the commission about you're going to look into marijuana, and the commission said it was pro no problem, and, well, I don't accept that. You remember that? Yep. That's so that <laughs> tricky dicky himself. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, mm. Yeah, that's, yeah. Anyway, it's a mess. Uh, well, that's that's <coughs> some of the stuff, and I'm going to come back a couple more times here because I got a whole lot more stuff to yeah. say. Well, that's great. Oh yeah, well, would, you bet. And uh, again, the Emer Emer Emerald Empire Hemp Fest is happening uh, July 15th, 16th, and the 17th, uh, and the new website is eehempfest.com. Dot com. So it's two e's and then hempfest.com. And uh, but we need volunteers badly. We need core members, especially. Uh, we need sponsors and vendors, especially hemp vendors. Uh, I am hearing from a couple of vendors uh, that are, have hemp products, which is great. I'm always glad to get that because we always get criticized. You know, enough hemp in your hemp. Well, I'll be the first one to agree with that. So it's right. You know. So uh, anyway, we do need more hemp in the hemp fest. I always wanted to wish we had somebody who was a hemp coordinator that actually would coordinate getting hemp in the, every aspect of the hemp fest. Somebody actually working on it. You know, I got so many other things to do. I got time to work on that yeah. thing. A couple know? years ago when I first started, you started doing your hemp fest thing down here and I came to a couple of meetings and I, I said, what we need to do is get a bunch of uh, hemp fiber, chop it all up. And David Sieber had this idea years ago of doing hemp creek. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and what are we going to make with it? Well, let's make some little dog houses out of it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. we don't have enough to make a big house out of it. Well, let's make some little dog houses because just the heat of their body will keep the thing warm in the winter. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, yeah. and, and yeah. so I think that would be kind of an interesting thought it process, but That's I don't have cool. time to be the hemp coordinator no. either. <laughs> Another idea. You heard it on Gene Cannabis TV. So I appreciate David Raymond coming in, and uh, you got Dan. Thanks for having me. Dan, can you bet? We'll see you next time.